Greetings and welcome to your first lecture from Intro to Social Work. Uh, this lecture is um, the so Social Work Profession. Um, this is uh, an introduction to Chapter 1. We're going to be looking at um, many of the points of uh, just getting you the general introduction to what social work is about. Uh, at the beginning of Chapter 1, there is a case study of Susan Dunn and her family. Um, and it talks about, I, I would encourage you to read through each, at the beginning of each chapter, this book is um, uh, presented with case studies. Um, so be prepared to come to class um, with having those case studies read because much of our in-class work is going to be surrounding the case studies. Um, so the case one study is uh, about Susan Dunn and her family and their need for uh, seeking out services in their community and how social work profession in, in often cases and in this case study is the one who provides those um, services and then prepare for chapter two the case study uh, on Stephanie Herman. The case studies are different than your day in the life of social worker. These are things that we will be discussing in the class to find out the different areas where we will be working with people as we go through working in the social work practice. Um, so for um, the uh, sake of uh, a brief introduction, uh, what is uh, social work? Social work is uh, a agency or a profession that um, delivers social services in government and private organizations throughout the world. Uh, the social work helps to people to prevent or to resolve problems in psychosocial functioning and to achieve life enhancing goals and create a just society. So what does this mean? The profession seeks to empower people and to identify and build on strengths that exist in people and their communities. Uh, social work does cover a lot more areas than just therapy or counseling. Um, the ultimate goal is social justice. Uh, it is seeks um, to identify and build on the existing strengths. The ultimate goal is social justice there. Um, the ultimate I'm sorry, I've already said that. The dual focus on social environment and psychological functioning of people. Uh, it, uh, oftentimes it will provide opportunity for those who want a different world, empowers those who are vulnerable and oppressed, is governed by a set of values and ethics that guide daily practice. Um, social work has a dual focus the social environment and the psychological functioning of people. This is what makes social work stand apart from other professions such as psychology or psychiatry. Social work values and guide and lead each professional to include the dignity and worth of all persons, commitment to service, and the ultimate goal of social justice. Uh, be sure and look at the uh, National Association of Social Worker um, code of ethics because that's going to give you a better idea of what the actual b background is. Um, the CSWE is a term that you're going to need to know. It's the Council on Social Work Education. Uh, it says that a social worker must meet all 12 competencies uh, and we will uh, look at those in just a minute. Uh, I do want to backtrack a little though and look at um, the key values are unique amongst professions, values guide and define ethical practice of social workers and it can be found in the NASW from 1996. And here's what it says. It provides opportunity for people who want to make a difference in the world, help individual persons and families and communities and work in a variety of settings. Uh, private nonprofit organizations, uh, faith-based agencies, governmental agencies, for-profit organizations, and private practice. Um, we're going to look at now the different levels of social workers. Uh, basically, um, it's a generalist practice, is a generalist perspective, and when we talk about generalist social workers, we're talking about bachelor level social workers, or a BSW, uh, professional social workers who engages in plan change process, discovering, utilizing, and making connections to and arrive at unique responsive solutions involving individual persons, families, groups, organizational systems, and communities. Generalist social workers respect and value human diversity, they identify 
and utilize the strengths existing in people and communities, journalists seek to prevent as well as resolve problems. And that's directly from your textbook. So a, 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 a BSW or a generalist social worker is someone with a four-year college degree, a person who possesses the journalist practice, perspective to practice. Uh, they're going to be able to uh, function and uh, utilize their skills in multiple areas of work in the community and organizations. A person who is specific, specific achieved a specific competencies as outlined in the Council on Social Work Education (CSWE). And most of your programs, your bachelor, your uh, bachelor programs or baccalaureate programs, are going to have a uh, program that's set up and approved by CSWE. And then a person whose education is built on liberal arts foundation. So the generalist social worker um, is going to be the person that uh, works towards um, the, the uh, welfare of the people that they work with. Uh, the eight content areas that it's talking about here uh, is values and ethics, human diversity, populations at risk social and economic and this is listed in your book the definition um, respects values and diversity a human behavior and the social environment social welfare uh, policies and services social work practice research and field education those are eight content areas that a bats or program is going to focus on in order for the student to uh, be in each of those areas. Uh, in the, the degree, the students will critically examine how social work fits personal, religious, and social values, uh, review the history of uh, the profession, explore public policy and how it affects social justice. Um, this is a definition of what I just gave you in the last slide. They understand how research impacts social work practice, learn how human behavior is impacted by their social environment, and then also students understand the needs um, of vulnerable populations as well as the needs of diverse groups. So within that degree um, of the BSW, that's basic is a good way to remember it. Um, the basics, uh, the expertise of a BSW social worker is prepared to, to begin practice after college graduation. Um, areas of competence that we discussed are defined by the CSWE. That's an important term to know is CSWE. Uh, what I will say about this is, is that a BSW is not doing clinical work. Uh, they're not licensed with the state with a bachelor's degree. You have to go on and get your master's degree to be licensed in the state of Texas. The L uh, M S W is the next level, and if someone has a, ma a, a master's degree in social work, they can become licensed with the state. But a, ba a, a BSW can still work case management, can still work for CPS, can still work in elderly care and hospitals and things. They just can't sit down and bill insurance or uh, do contract work or receive referrals for clinical counseling. The MSW is the one who can do that, and it's a uh, master degree in social worker, uh, is a two-year degree after the undergraduate degree with a BSW opportunity for advanced standing, uh, focus on a specific area of practice, and engage in advanced level of practice or leadership. A, uh, in the state of Texas, that's considered to be a LMSW, a licensed master social worker. A person with a doctoral or master degree in social work from a CSWE accredited school social work program with a passing score on the master's exam administered nationally by the Association of Social Worker Board. Um, the next level of that is the LMSWAP, Advanced Practitioner, must be licensed as an LMSW, obtain 3,000 hours of board approval, uh, supervised by a professional, employment experience over a minimal two-year period, but within a maximum of four-year period. Uh, so you become a licensed, your general license to work, then your next level is uh, Advanced Practitioner. Um, and uh, the LCSW is the next level we're going to talk about. The LCSW is whenever someone is able to have a total of, uh, it comes out to around 10,000 hours total, a uh, 4,000 for your LMSW, and then another uh, 3,000 for your LMSWAP, and then the other uh, 3,000 hours um, as a LCSW. 
um, the passing score on the advanced journalist exam um, and then complete a minimum 100 hours of face-to-face -face supervision over the course of the 3,000 hours experience with a board approved supervisor. So what this is is on the level of education, your education does not always line up with your uh, licensure. A uh, person with the BSW is not going to be licensed with the state. A person with the MSW will be able eligible to take the test and be licensed as a master social worker and there's still advancement that you can go there. Oftentimes it's described in the field that someone who is an LCSW is on the level of a PhD or DSW uh, because that person has a clinical experience so they're looked at as being on the level of doctorate. However, you can also go ahead and get a, a PhD in social work uh, and this person is able to teach in social work programs and engage in social work research. Um, as a licensed social worker, you're required to maintain your license with continuing education hours. Uh, it's important to understand that um, we will look at uh, within the uh, framework of this class some uh, some more of the state licensure and certification levels uh, and what it is uh, later on in the class. Um, it is also mandated the law that no one who is declared who is not licensed as a social worker, someone cannot put on a business card or on an advertisement or anything that they are a social worker until they have passed the licensing exam. So even though someone is um, working towards social work, they cannot use the title social work until they are to that level. Um, here's some different uh, examples of social work practice settings. Um, the uh, opportunities for work if you have a degree in social work include government and juvenile justice, home-based public health, and then county administration in the community areas, a nonprofit residential treatment, office-based, a home-based home visitor or home health, uh, and then community-based is advocacy agency. Faith-based would be at a homeless shelter, would be office-based. Home-based would be parent education. And then uh, community-based would be a coalition of organizations. For-profit office-based would be at a nursing home. Uh, home-based would be, again, home health. And then community-based would be research or community development. Private practice, office base would be a therapist if you're on the clinical level as, level as a LMSW or LCSW. A home base is in-home therapy. Uh, and then community-based private practice, you would be a consultant with many other different organizations. Social work roles, um, some important roles or some important um, areas to have uh, for a social worker is uh, you must be an effective communicator. You're working with uh, a lot of different people, bringing people together. Social workers are often those that are the first line of defense for crisis and situations. So a social worker must be able to communicate the needs of the community and be able to discuss the areas of growth and uh, abilities. Um, they must be able to facilitate behavioral change and effective coping through assessment and intervention. Uh, in the field, you must be able to look at uh, areas where change is needed um, and work in uh, field education and be able to uh, look at areas of change and advancement and then work towards making that change possible, making it happen. Uh, advocate for environmental improvement to meet the human needs. Um, social workers are constantly uh, dealing with client, uh, with uh, uh, advocating for their client and advancement of client needs in areas where there are hardships. A broker of resources, finding referral sources, using a connection of community nonprofits and other government agencies to help those who are underserviced or underprivileged. A case manager being able to juggle and manage all of the documentation that's needed when you deal with healthcare organizations or grants or other type of documentation that's needed. And then educator and organizer, definitely a role of educating the community and working towards um, the uh, ability to help others to learn through their situations and issues. Um, the environment is there as uh, the environment that the social worker is directly related to has to do with the population that they are serving. Um, the um, people who may uh, interact with your agency or with you as a professional 
counselor or um, whatever area that you're working in, you're going to have opportunity to um, use your resources to help others. Um, and so that's something that's important to take into account and to look at. Um, state licensure and certification, I've spoke a little of that and I will speak more on that as we get in future slides about uh, Texas uh, and what the needs are. Um, the state regulatory boards is Department of State Health Services is uh, one of them uh, and it's uh, professional licensing and certification unit is another. Uh, their competency examinations, I will be giving you some slides later on. Um, we've already talked about the title protection of the social work and continuing education um, and then the credentialing of specific practice requirements. Uh, for your information, a couple of extra things for you to, uh, to know about here is uh, that there's currently approximately 600,000 people hold social work degrees in the United States. According to the U.S. Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor Statistics, social work is one of the fastest growing careers in the U.S. The profession is expected to grow 30% by 2010. While a bachelor's degree is the minimum requirement, a master in social work or related field has become the standard for many professions. Uh, you can use your associate's degree in chemical dependency counseling as a launching platform while you work towards your bachelor's degree in social work, allowing you to do chemical dependency clinical work as you work forward and towards your bachelor's and master's in social work. In order to build insurance companies, there is a de facto rule that insurance companies do not typically uh, accept billing for anyone who has less than a master's degree. Most states require practicing social workers to be licensed, certified, or registered. Professional social workers are found in every facet of community life in schools, hospitals, mental health clinics, senior centers, elected office, private practices, persons, prisons, I'm sorry, military co corporations, and in numerous public and private agencies that serve individuals and families in need. Many of the benefits we take for granted come because social workers such as Social Security, unemployment insurance, and disability pay. Uh, there are 170 social workers in national, state, and local elected officials, uh, including two U.S. Senators and four U.S. Representatives, plus one famous basketball player. A social work education. Uh, we In the area here, there is a Bachelor of Social Work that you can do at the University of Houston Clear Lake, TSU, Prairie View University, and Mar Lamar University in Beaumont. The Master of Social Work is completed at the University of Houston, as well as the doctor, a Doctorate of Social Work. Um, the organizations that I was speaking about earlier, there are 48 in the U.S. The main one that we're going to talk about now is the NASW. The NASW is meant to develop professional practice, um, is a uh, call to social workers to action, establish and enforce professional standards, support members, and then the CSWE is the accreditation process for social work education programs, which is your higher education and, and your... your um, colleges uh, that have these uh, accredited program facilitate curriculum development and new knowledge in the field and promote social justice and strengthen individuals and communities uh, the each of these programs uh, has different areas um, that they work uh, that they're accredited that they work on for those who are in the field uh, according to NASW from 2001 to 2002 Social workers are 79% female, 34% are between ages 43 and 62, 20% has 25 more year experience, and 19 has 5 to 14 year experience, 19% uh, has 25 plus experience in mental health or behavioral services, 66% uh, are reported are married, 87% uh, are white Caucasian, 22% report income that is under $30,000, 23% full-time employees report their income 30 to 49,000. Uh, so it's important to uh, realize that you're uh, when you're getting in this field, you're probably not getting into it for the pay, although with many years experience after uh, a period of time, uh, you will, uh, with clinical experience, have a higher pay rate. Uh, and depending on the type of leadership role that you take in, uh, take on uh, with the different uh, salaries will increase with your years of experience and clinical knowledge. 
there's a uh, real uh, similarity to other professions such as uh, sociology uh, which is understand the behavior and beliefs of specific groups psychology understand how individuals develop counseling uh, support the emotional and social needs of individuals and families marriage and family therapy assist individuals to resolve conflicts with significant others and human services promote the well-being of others so there is a real um, uh, comparison to other areas where um, what used to be back in the early 1800s to 1900s which uh, your MDs your medical doctors was your stop one-stop shop for anything um, that was uh, considered to be a major um, psychiatric or psychology problem and then anything counseling was done by your uh, pastoral care your priest or uh, someone who is considered to be a religious or um, spiritual authority and then these uh, roles begin to come out of the place of the doctor psychiatrists uh, of course came around and have always been a part of the medical history uh, and then psychiatrists uh, from that point of uh, not being as much of the counseling side of things with the MD side then came a wave of the future which is social workers uh, being licensed to do the clinical type counseling and such uh, and then therapists of course came about around the same time uh, the most newest part of the field uh, which is following in the footsteps of therapists and social workers is your chemical dependency counselors uh, which have only been around for approximately 50 years now uh, if you look at um, the different type of uh, wave of the way that social work has uh, changed over the years it has become more of a clinical setting uh, the mission of social work is to care for others especially those who are vulnerable and oppressed promote the growth and development of all uh, change society by advocating for policies of change that promote social justice um, and then uh, you can look at the mission statement and then easily see where there's a uh, real uh, similarity to other professions such as uh, sociology uh, which is understand the behavior and beliefs of specific groups psychology understand how individuals develop counseling uh, support the emotional and social needs of individuals and families marriage and family therapy assist individuals to resolve conflicts with significant others and human services promote the well-being of others so there is a real um, uh, comparison to other areas where um, what used to be back in the early 1800s to 1900s which uh, your MDs your medical doctors was your stop one-stop shop for anything um, that was uh, considered to be a major um, uh, psychiatric or psychology problem and then anything counseling was done by your uh, pastoral care your priest or uh, someone who is considered to be a religious or um, spiritual authority and then these uh, roles begin to come out of the place of the doctor psychiatrists uh, ha of course came around and have always been a part of the medical history uh, and then psychiatrists uh, from that point of uh, not being as much of the counseling side of things with the MD side then came a wave of the future which is social workers uh, being licensed to do the clinical type counseling and such uh, and then therapists of course came about around the same time uh, the most newest part of the field uh, which is following in the footsteps of therapists and social workers is your chemical dependency counselors uh, which have only been around for approximately 50 years now uh, if you look at um, the different type of uh, wave of the way that social work has uh, changed over the years it has become more of a clinical setting uh, the mission of social work is to care for others especially those who are vulnerable and oppressed promote the growth and development of all uh, change society by advocating for policies of change that promote social justice um, and then uh, you can look at the mission statement and then easily see where these came from. Um, if you want to learn more, there is um, uh, some uh, websites that you can go to. One is uh, the Texas Social Work Licensure, which is at dshs.state.tx.us, and then the National Association of Social Work. You can Google e either of those, and those will come up. Uh, I am going to end this video here, and we are going to do a separate 
I'm going to do a separate video um, on the uh, beginnings of uh, the social work. I will do um, a separate lecture on this slide because I want to be able to um, clue in on you know what, I'm going to go ahead, uh, ending today's lecture, uh, let's look at the development of social work practice and review where uh, social work came into play. Uh, social work is evolving young profession. Um, the mission, of course, I just gave you, and now we want to look at how it uh, came about. During the Civil War, there were the first paid social work type positions, and there are three main historical movements. Number one is the Charity Organization Society, which began in England. Uh, 1877 is an important date to know. It started in uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, Mary Richmond is the most famous leader of the Charity Organization Society. Uh, COS volunteers initially viewed poverty of urban dwellers as a result of character defects. Uh, they were friendly visitors, uh, marital aid offered by only as a last resort. Like I said, there was a wave of change where these type of situations were dealt with with your doctor or your pastor, uh, and uh, often cases it was seen as a disgrace to involve outsiders into family uh, issues. However, um, a charity organization society came about as a social change to help those who were in need. Next was settlement houses. Settlement houses began in England. Jane Addams was the most famous leader. Addams established the whole house in Chicago in 1889. That's important to know. Um, she established uh, many different, uh, but the whole house is the most important in Chicago in 1889. Brought a more compassionate view of the uh, COS volunteers. Uh, settlement house looked at people as uh, rehabilitate. Uh, able to be rehabilitated and helped, uh, whereas Charitable Organization Society uh, was not as um, um was not as helpful. They were helpful, but they oftentimes were considered to look down upon the people that they were trying to help. Uh, the uh, assisted in developing the settlement house movement, assisted in helping developing and developing needed services, believed poverty resulted from unjust and unfortunate social conditions, uh, which is a very different uh, than the COS volunteers, which reviewed uh, viewed poverty as a uh, result of character defects. Uh, the the uh, Settlement House Movement advocated for better working conditions and protective legislation through various government bodies. And then finally, Child Welfare Movement began with Children's Aid Society, uh, founded in New York in 1853, strengthened by the Society for Pre Prevention and Cruelty of Children, founded in New York in 1875. This is where your child labor laws and such are going to begin to come about. Uh, this is the development. Uh, these are the uh, three historical movements which uh, began to uh, show a need for social advocacy and social change, which is where social workers come from. Uh, in the 1890s, there was a desire for a profession uh, that uh, encompassed the work that these different organizations were doing by the early 1900s. Applied philanthropy began to be called social work or social case work. By 1904, New York School of Philanthropy established the first professional education program, and that was 1904. In 1915, Abraham Flexner invited by social workers to address the National Conference of Charities and Correction, related that social work was not yet a real profession, but energy started to be directed towards rectifying deficiencies he identified. By 1935, the Social Security Act came about and social works played a prominent role in that. During World War One and Two, further increased social works involvement in mental health. By the 1950s, MSWs dominated the profession. 1970s, BSWs were added to the NASW membership. And then finally, founding of NSA, NASW and enactment of NSAW Code of Ethics firmly established social work as a profession. Now, all of these points are in your book in Chapter 1. Uh, this is going to conclude this first lecture, and uh, I will continue on with some of the history and then social work context in the next lecture. Thank you, and I'll see you in class.